Hey class, wanted to give you a video about how to use parameter variation. Uh, there's a lot of little things to have to remember, and I figured if we had a video, we could always go back and look it up. So the very first thing is you want to be able to create your, um, your experiment. So if you just right click, you can go to new experiment, and you might not be able to see this piece, but you pick parameter variation, uh, give it a name, and click finish. So at this point, you have a parameter variation. And one of the things that's a little interesting is that the, the experiment itself has its own dashboard. So you can put in your own um, uh, graphs and charts. You can put in your own code. Uh, but one of the common things that you do is you're going to have it create just a default uh, UI. So you just press that button. And it will give you something that will tell you how many times you've run, you know, what are all the different parameters that you have. Uh, and that can be pretty helpful. Now, you're going to have to clean up your code a little bit to get it to work. You'll notice here that it has some parameters already listed, and we can, we can alter those. But those parameters have to be in main. And so if I take a look over in main, there's only so many parameters that we have uh, listed. Oh, one sec. There we go. So we only have so many um, different parameters listed. If I want to have parameters that were built inside of the agents, I need to build a parameter here. So for instance, here I built wolf hunting success and I gave it a value. And then when I go into wolf, for the hunting success, I can just set the default value to whatever was inside of main. So what we're doing is we're creating all of our necessary parameters in main, and then we're going to kind of push it into the, uh, the agents themselves. This allows, your, um, this allows your parameter variation to find those parameters and to be able to alter them. So when we look at our parameters, uh, you'll see that there's a type fixed. We can uh, click off of that and go to range. And then we can say, what do we want the minimum, the maximum, and the step size? So this is good if we want to do all of the initial rabbits starting from 10 rabbits to, say, 1,000 rabbits, and we want to do a stepping size of 10. I mean, this would be a lot of runs, but if it's running at night when I'm asleep, maybe I don't care so much. So some can stay fixed, but like I said, if you ever want to change any of these, uh, change them, run the experiment, and you should be in good shape. Now, a couple of other things that we want to keep in mind is that by default, all of these run on a fixed seed. This is why when you run your simulation one time, you see something, and then you run it again, it looks exactly the same. And that should be a little alarming because you said there should be randomness. But what's happening here is it's picking a random number to start with, and it builds everything off of that random number. So what you should do is if you want to be able to run it multiple times and get slightly different results, um, you know, not just get lucky once, select random seed. If you select random seed, then every time it'll be a new random thing. If you want to run it more than once, use replications. Now, when you do the replications, it'll run it over and over and over again, and this will allow you to see all of those results. Now. That's kind of everything about setting it up and running it. And we could run it, and it would run for a while, and it would be like, yes, I did it. But then you wouldn't get any of your data out. So getting your data out can be a little bit annoying. There's, there's kind of a standard way. Um, and the standard way is to go and make use of these data sets. And a data set's basically a, a pair. You can put in pairs of values and, and store that. Now, I'm going to go back to an earlier project that I had. And the way that we can save it is we can go to the data set. And uh, before each experiment runs, we tell it to reset that data set. And then at the end of a simulation, we can then go and grab the data that we want. And remember, these are pairs. So 
I provide like the hunting success and the wolf size. And this allowed me to figure out if there's any wolves sticking around after my, uh, my simulation ran. So this works pretty well um, if you're working with something rather simplistic. Um, and so for instance, if I wanted to be able to graph it inside of any logic, that works. The problem is, is that it gets really tedious because you can only store two things at a time. And so there's a more robust method that's available, and that is that we can create a text file. You'll find the text files over here in the connections, connectivity, and then you can drag that text file down. Now inside the text file, you have to say, um, what's the file? So you give the name of the file, and then you want to set it for write mode. Uh, that means that you're going to be making a change to it. Okay, once you do that, we can come back to, um, to do, come back to our Java actions. And now you can see that I can just have a really long print line. So it's text file, whatever the variable name was, dot print line. And then inside of that, I'm just creating a really long string. And that string is basically one line in my CSV file. So here I'm gonna store the hunting success and the wolf size, but I could store all of my parameters in there, right? I can store um, anything that I might be varying. Um, I could store the size of the grass and the, the bunnies. All of that is something that would be available to me. Okay, after the experiment, make sure you close your file. Uh, that way all the data will be there and usable. So at this point, you'll have a text file, um, hopefully one that could be read by uh, something like Excel or Google Docs. And you'll find that you've got a lot more um, flexibility in how you want to approach the problem. Uh, the data sets are really great, but they're kind of assuming that it's a one-to-one, -one, uh, kind of a pairing of operations. But if you're dealing with multiple variables, over multiple runs, it starts to get a little convoluted and that data set doesn't seem to be um, an easy way to, to work with all that data. So once you have all of that set up, you can then go and run the, uh, the parameters variation. So I'll just right click, tell it to run, and then I'll be here for a while because it's gonna go through every possible combination. It's up on a different screen. Okay, I'll see you in class and we'll talk about this some more.